Samuel Holmes Shepherd. I was 11 years old in 1954, sixth grader, when my mother, like most of the country, developed a fascination with the Sam Shepherd murder case. Believe it or not, I graduated from college in 1966, 12 years later, before the case finally reached a conclusion. Sam Shepard was a doctor in Cleveland, Ohio, married, father of a seven-year-old son. The family lived in a palatial estate, high on a cliff overlooking Lake Erie. Sam was voted most likely to succeed, athletic, smart, good-looking, came from a good family. Marilyn Shepard was attractive, hazel eyes, long brown hair, mother, homemaker, taught Bible classes at the Methodist Church. They began dating in high school, got married after Sam graduated from medical school nine years later, remained active together, playing golf, tennis, and water skiing. On the night of July 3, 1954, Sam and Marilyn were entertaining neighbors at their lakefront home, watching an old black and white thriller, Strange Holiday, starring Westchester PA's Claude Rains. By the way, I pass Claude's mansion whenever I visit my favorite ex, who lives right across the street. But I digress. Sam Shepard fell asleep on the couch. When the movie ended, Marilyn, who was four months pregnant, saw the neighbors to the door, then she went to bed. In the middle of the night, Sam suddenly awakened. When he heard his wife screaming his name. He ran upstairs to their bedroom and saw a bushy-haired man fighting with his wife. But before Sam could intervene, the stranger hit him over the head with something and knocked him unconscious. Sam regained consciousness. He discovered his wife on the bed, bloodied and beaten, the victim of a horrific bludgeoning. Being a doctor, Sam checked Marilyn's pulse, but found none. Sam ran to the next bedroom, checked on his son, found him safe, sound asleep. Sam heard noises downstairs, ran downstairs, found the back door open, went outside and saw someone running. He chased after the man, caught up with him. They started fighting, but the man hit him over the head once more and knocked him unconscious once again. Sam's story, and he's sticking with it to the end. Like I just said, that's Sam's story, and he's sticking to it. But let me lay some credentials on the table. I've written more than 100 murder stories from coast to coast and in the Caribbean islands of St. Croix, St. Thomas, and Puerto Rico, all published in international magazines, plus one book published in both the U.S. and Germany, and in the process of doing the research for those stories, I worked with some of the best homicide detectives in the world and picked the brains of each one. So, if I'm investigating this case way back in 1954 and listening to Sam Shepard's story, my bullshit alarm is going off all the way through. Let's see. Neighbors are over, watching a movie, and Sam falls asleep on the couch. After the movie ends, his wife shows the neighbors the door, then goes to bed. Possible. Maybe he woke up and saw that happen. But he wakes up when he hears his wife screaming his name. Runs upstairs and sees a bushy-haired man fighting with his wife. But before he can intervene, the bushy-haired man hits Sam over the head and knocks him unconscious. Sam eventually regains consciousness and sees his wife's body on the bed, bloodied and beaten. Based on what I see, she's dead, but I'm no doctor, so perhaps if I were a doctor, I'd check her pulse. Sam runs to his son's bedroom to check on him, finds him sound asleep and safe. Now he hears noises downstairs, runs downstairs. The back door is open. He looks outside and sees someone running, chases him, catches him. They start fighting, and the man hits him over the head again and knocks him out again. Sorry, but if I'm the bushy-haired man, and I just killed a woman and knock some guy out, probably your husband. I'm not hanging around looking for chump change to steal. While the man regains consciousness, checks his wife's pulse, checks his son's welfare in another bedroom, and then runs downstairs, spots me running and chases me down. Now, I'm hauling ass as fast as I can, as soon as I can. Dr. Shepard, 
This is so-and-so. He's our sketch artist. Could you please describe this bushy-haired man as best you can? Sam Shepard is charged, stands trials, and convicted for murdering his wife and sent to prison. Now, let's switch gears. This was a huge case that captured the imagination of our nation, much like the O.J. Simpson case did back in 1994. To me, the Sam Shepard case looks like a perfect vehicle for books or movies or maybe a TV series, you know, like maybe The Fugitive, which in fact did come out in 1963. So let's compare and contrast the true murder case with the fictional one. Sam Shepard and Richard Kimball, both doctors. Intruders killed both of their wives. Both Shepard and Kimball gave somewhat exotic description of the killers. A bushy-haired man killed Dr. Shepard's wife, and a one-armed man killed Dr. Kimball's wife. Both Shepard and Kimball were tried and convicted for murdering their wives, and both went to prison. But let's just stop right there with our comparisons for now. I've contended all along that the Sam Shepard murder case inspired the fictional Fugitive TV series, and later the movie. And I mentioned that a while back on one of my shows, and immediately got some blowback about being wrong. Roy Huggins is the name of the man who created the Fugitive, and Huggins has always denied that being the case. Who knows why? Perhaps for liability reasons, since the Shepard case was still going through the appeals process when the Fugitive came out. or perhaps not to diminish his creative genius. However, the producers of the original series never denied the similarity between the two cases, and they never seconded Roy Huggins' denials. So, I'm going to expand on the Sam Shepard case a little more, but that's it for today. Except for a plug for Born to be Wild, Warner Books published Born to be Wild 30 years ago, Baste Verlag bought the translation rights and published the book in Germany, under the title of Der Wild. It's a true murder story, classic outlaw biker saga. Two years of research went into the book. I worked with local law enforcement, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Michigan, plus John Walsh at America's Most Wanted, and the U.S. Marshal Service. The Marshals tracked this fugitive for six years before they finally brought him to justice. Born to be Wild is still selling at Amazon and other booksellers. So, that's it for today. Thanks for stopping in. Until next time. See you. And that's a wrap.